Welcome, everyone. Thank you to our first, thank you for coming to our first Facebook Live of 2022. I can't believe we're already into it. And we are into it. Uh, we have some great things to show you today. I have Kathy Davis as our guest. But before we get into the heart of what we're going to talk about today, I want to update you on a few things regarding So Confident Series 11. Thank you so much for all of you who signed up starting at midnight on Christmas Day. <laughs> it was amazing. And of course, you um, ordered kits as well. And we are curious. Um, when we put together our kit colors, and these are our kit colors, which I'll talk about in just a minute, uh, we kind of threw in navy at the end, thinking, oh, we'll just throw in some navy. And navy turned out to be a very popular color. So if you're sitting there today and you have a minute to chat, tell us why navy is uh, a popular color, because it's not always the chosen color in every other fabric that we sell and have. So we're just curious about it, if you want to give us your take on why you might have chosen navy. Um, but at any rate, uh, we are madly uh, trying to update things about kits. In the last Facebook Live, I made the mistake of saying that once we were out, we were out. And of course, that may or may not be true. And so I should know, hopefully today, whether we can get more of the fabrics for the jacket kits. And I'm feeling pretty confident about it. So those of you who have emailed me separately, Linda at sewingworkshop.com and given me your preference of colors. I've made note of that. We're working on it. Just know that we're going to make sure that you're happy for your wardrobe planning for the year. We're not going to leave you stranded. So um, we also have had inquiries about download patterns versus print patterns. And I, if you've been following what I've been saying for the last few months, you know that our Long-time printing facility closed in October, and we are gearing up with another company uh, that's a bit unfamiliar to us, so there are some changes in formatting for us. Envelope size will be a little bit different. Tissue size will be, or tissue color will be a little bit different. And there's a, been a lag time because they're gearing up, we're gearing up, and so we don't expect to see printed patterns now until April. So for the Sterling jacket, which is the pattern for January, it is available now as a download pattern. And we, will, we have sent it to the printer, and it will be here, but we're not sure when, so we're saying April at the earliest. And it's, in terms of the whole program, it, it is our intention to always have every one of our patterns in print and download patterns. Uh, so we're not abandoning the print uh, option. It's still a big part of what we do, but we are also offering digital patterns there is a preference for that by some people, and particularly our international customers who really appreciate it because the shipping um, to Canada and the UK and Australia and various places around the world is, can be pretty expensive. So they do appreciate the digital patterns. But out of the mix for the year, it's a, it's a pretty decent balance. And uh, while right here at the beginning we have the digital pattern options, the print options are going to be coming. So. Just note that we're, we're, trying to stay, uh, we're trying to stay with you on it, and so uh, don't be disappointed. These are the kit. We have five kit options for the garments for this Series 11 beginning. We have the first month, which is January, which is the sterling jacket. You can wear it as a jacket. You can wear it as a shirt. And the video for the how-to on making this jacket will be released this Friday, January 7th, and you will be able to get your materials list and your video all on the same day. January 7th is also the last day for you to sign up um, at the discounted price, the 10% off price for So Confident. So the regular 425 at 10% off is 380, 250, or whatever. I'm not sure I'm saying the right numbers, but the 10% off goes off on January 7th. It is also your last day to sign up for the yearly commitment, but to pay by the month. And that uh, ends also on Friday. But after Friday, of course, you can still sign up for So Confident all year long, or you can sign up for a class of your choice at um, by the month at uh, $49.99. There are some special perks for being part of a yearly program. 
discounts on fabrics, patterns, and notions, access to a private Facebook page, which was very active last year, the uh, question and answer sessions, um, what else? Uh, me uh, other member-only sales and promotions and activities within the membership. So we encourage you to sign up for the full year, either all at once or as a monthly payment plan. But these are our kits that we're starting out with. Um, so you see this is the jacket fabric. It's a um, uh, cotton, viscose, and linen mat -lise. We're pairing it with a t-shirt and some pants, a variation of our Hudson pants. So this is our olive grouping. We have an oatmeal grouping that we're pairing with some green, but of course the oatmeal goes with a lot of things as well. But we are putting it with the linen pants and the viscose t-shirt. We have navy paired with a lighter blue and a tone-on-tone -tone plaid check for the pants. This is our auburn combo and we have a black combo as well. So five selections. These are the five kits available. If you are interested in navy or oatmeal, maybe black now, I'm not sure. Email me and tell me your preference and I'll add it to the list of uh, uh, yardage that I'm ordering ASAP. All right, I think that takes care of So Confident. One more thing. Um, when you make a purchase of a kit, if you're a member of So Confident, you get a special code for a discount. And that applies to kits, fabrics, notions, not notions. Sorry about that. Fabric and kits and patterns. Thank you. You must use your discount code on your order. It is very, it's a hardship for us, frankly, to go back into our system and try to redo those numbers. So please remember to put your discount code in your order. If you have questions about that, you can email us, call us, whatever, we'll walk you through it. But once you do it, you'll know where it is. Uh, it's it's, it's easy, it's super easy, but it is sometimes forgotten by you because you wake up later and go, oh, I forgot to put that in there, but just make a note, to please put it in there. We also have had some issues with some information out of accounts that have been dropping off. So Aaron's going to um, come, on the, come on board here. You might be able, hmm? I mic. She needs your microphone, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, she's going to explain to you why this is and what you can do about it. Uh, it is through our particular cart system that we have limits on the number of items that can be in your account. So here's Erin. She's going to tell you about it. She's the techie person. I'm just the person who Hello. relays the information, sort of, kind of. Uh, so with our cart, um, it does have a hundred order limit on what you can see. Of course, not on how many you know orders you can place. Um, right. <laughs> but um, for your account history, when you log into your account and you go to your order history, um, it does have a hundred order limit. And so what we're really emphasizing is that you download your, especially your patterns. Um, you know, you purchase a pattern, and if you could download it and put it on your computer or store it on your iPad, whatever your device is, um, and keep it that way. Um, that way you know you have it. Um, and of course, you know, we can see your entire order history. So if you do have any issue with a, you know, with a pattern that you don't see in your account history, we will be glad to send it to you, email it to you. Um, and so that's not a problem whatsoever. But we do um, want to emphasize that it'd be great if you could start downloading those digital files. Do you want to address the issue of the portal a little bit for So, for confident, so confident? or the, no, we're not calling it the portal this year, right? So, so when you are a So Confident member, you do get a link, um, a yearly So Confident member, you get a link um, to a page where you can access all your So Confident information. Um, and that's outside of either your account. That's outside of your account. Um, and so you can, this link will be the same, you know, link all throughout the year. And um, so you can use that link and it will give you access to all your files for the year for So Confident. It will be divided up into each month's project. Um, so I think it'll be a lot more accessible and a lot easier, more user-friendly this year. Right. 
Um, so, um, but that's a great way to access all of your so confident information. I think it'll be easier for you to download um, and then also easier for you to, instead of it being kind of at the back of your order history, because mm -hmm. I know by the time December hits, if you ordered it in December or January of the previous year, that order is, has made its way to the bottom. So I think this is a good way to right. be able to access all your files for so confident. So great. I yeah, definitely advise you to use that. Okay, so. sounds great. Thanks. All right. Obviously, if you have questions about that, uh, Betsy, don't call me. <laughs> call Betsy, Aaron, or Alex, whatever. They are completely tuned into it. I'm, I'm, um, I'm, just, I'm just here. <laughs> All right. So today is the launch of a pattern that we had in our library a few years ago. And every time, it, it was discontinued. And every time people would come to our So Confident, or So Kansas events, they would try on this garment, go to the vault in the basement of our uh, studio here, and try on this garment, and come back up and say, why don't you have this pattern? I want this pattern. And, oh, I don't know. We just didn't get around to it. So Kathy Davis, come on in here. Um, it's, it's the Verona pattern, coat and jacket. You were the person who developed this pattern, wanted this pattern, wore this pattern, wears this pattern, loves Love this, this pattern. pattern. <laughs> <laughs> so it is back. And it is back both as a printed pattern and a digital pattern. Now, there is a slight difference. I don't even know if you know this. The printed version is a short jacket and a long coat. The digital is the short jacket only. You, you started to say something? So we were, it was trying to reconnect, but we're, we're good now. OK, OK. <laughs> so um, tell us why you like this pattern. Well, I think because every time I put it on, I feel like I've lost five pounds and look really chic. <laughs> <laughs> that's a pretty good selling point. <laughs> it's just a slim coat that's very, very elegant looking. It is. And also it can be, I mean, we have some to show that it can be a fun casual jacket. It can be any, any fabric. Yeah. It's, it's, it's fits the shoulders, which people, some people really like. Not everyone likes drop shoulders. We do have a lot of drop shoulder patterns in our, in our um, assortment, but uh, this one does have a set in sleeve, a beautiful tailored set in sleeve. Look, and this, just fits beautifully on the shoulder yeah. here. And two, yeah, two piece sleeve. Two piece sleeve, which is always uh, more beautiful, more couture, so that you get that natural bend in the sleeve. And um, it can, you can wear shoulder pads or not. We have a shoulder pad that we like to use um, that is the same shoulder pad that's used in uh, Giorgio Armani jackets. We've sold this little pedal pad for years, and we, we still have this. It's the only shoulder pad we sell. It's the only pa shoulder pad we use. Now, coincidentally, neither one of us have on shoulder pads today no. in our garments. But normally, and we'll show you some that do. But I, I would actually, when I look at this one, I would put it in here. But, you know, these are the only shoulder pads that just make finish it up. Yeah, it's not much, but just a little bit. That uh, makes a difference. And there's room in the pattern mm -hmm. for the shoulder pad. In fact, these are the only shoulder pads you'll ever need. Ever. That's right. Ever. <laughs> Since we're past the 80s. <laughs> in age or years? Years. <laughs> <We're>, well, <laughs> coming close. <laughs> OK. Um, all right. So, why, um, so you like it because it's, it's um, you're right, can be made in a lot of different fabrics. It's stylish. It's elegant. But it's simple. It has tailoring features to it in that it has a beautiful shaped facing. So let's, let's show one here. I think this one will show up perhaps. Yes. This one has shoulder pads, by the way. So one of the things I like about it is this beautiful connection of the facing and the lining. You can see this curve, this very gentle curve. So normally you have a straight line where the lining joins the facing, and you can do a whole bagging the lining thing, but this particular facing is appliqued on. 
So it's on top of the lining. Actually, the lining's on top of the facing, isn't it? Yes. No, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> well, it could be, but it doesn't really matter. But I'm pretty sure the instructions say facing over the lining. You only made this 29 times. I know. Yep, that's facing yep, over the that, lining. Yep, that's right. <laughs> but you always have fun with your linings and facings. So, like, you've pieced this facing. You know, that's an old, what was that guy's name? Um, Todd Oldham. Todd, Todd Oldham Fabric. Yeah. 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 Which I think is really interesting, and you you sometimes contrast the collar. Talk about some of the other details that you do. Well, this has a little band from the uh, Todd Oldham fabric on the pocket. There's a little facing on the top of the pocket. You can see it on this one, um, where you can run the fabric. Use a contrasting fabric. You can turn the fabric. That shows it really well. Yeah, this is one of my favorite ones, too. So this is a, we're going to talk about this fabric a little bit later. Uh, but you can see that really accentuates the top band. And there's a gorgeous. This is an opportunity to, to use either uh, some something from your stash that you might have had for that beautiful silk blouse that you never got around to making because you didn't need a silk blouse anymore. <laughs> or you can use regular lining fabrics, Bembird rayon or China silks or whatever, some polyesters. But you do want something that has a, a smooth finish to it because that is one of the purposes of lining a garment is to, uh, this sleeve is, is slim enough on this garment that I think you want the ease of slicker fabrics. To yeah, I sleeve. like the ease of it. Yeah, slipping on and off. And now you added this band. I did. It's a great, in fact, I'd probably also, would, some of the things we'll show today would add one on the bottom too. If right. you want to use just a few pieces of the boucle or Sherpa or wool or even fur. Yeah, fur would be cool. It's a great thing and you don't have to do the whole garment. One of the things that I unearthed when I moved was um, a, a sack of fur bits from my mother's old fur coats. Now, it sounds like my mother had a lot of fur coats. I think they were muskrat. <laughs> <laughs> or With a head on them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. One does have a head on it, which I can hardly look at. So anyway, she saved whatever little fur things that she had. So here's another one. Okay, and this is the original pattern coat. This is the original jacket. The original jacket doesn't have a shorter sleeve. It has an about kind of a, do we call it princess bracelet? It's, it will have a shorter sleeve. This is the sleeve in the pattern. Right. The coat has the longer sleeve. Yes. 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 So when you made this yes. for me, thank you very much. And this is the original length in the pattern. Right. So you lengthened this for me. Two inches. Two inches. And you lengthen the sleeve. An inch, inch and, and a half. half. Yes. Yeah. So bear in mind, if you want length sleeves and on the bottom, be sure to add it to it. I think one of the reasons this jacket sits so well on uh, your, your body is because it has these darts. I, yeah. That is something that, it's a subtle detail, but it really helps to sit properly on your body and for many of us who are beginning to get a little bit are you gonna put one on yeah all right okay and it also has dark bus starts yes okay watch me lose five pounds <laughs> <laughs> I don't know it seems like you need to lose at least ten <laughs> you've gotten awful big voila <laughs> All right, so it is an above the knee length. Yeah, it could be full length. I've added two inches to the other ones that it will show too. Yeah, isn't that pretty? It's double breasted, couple buttons. And there is shoulder pads in here and you mm -hmm. see they're not overwhelming. It's just the perfect set on your shoulders. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Well, I'll put on my favorite one, <laughs> as long as we're trying on. Show the line. So here's Here's one. 
that has instead, now this, on this one you've used the same fabric on the outside and then a contrasting fabric on the inside. The one I'm going to try on, <laughs> you'll get to see the t-shirt the that I have on that has the poked shoulders from the hangers. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I meant to steam it out and I didn't get around to it. I love this coat. But you have a plaid fabric on the inside and a solid on the outside. You made this coat. Yes. Yes. And then you've added a little flat piping below this right. pocket. Yeah. So oh. I think it, it looks like a tailored garment, but there's not the tailored fussiness in it. You there's no pad stitching. You don't have to do a um, lapel collar. It all goes perfectly flat all the way up. Mm -hmm. Your pocket is a patch pocket. You're not doing um, welt well, pockets. Mm -hmm. But still it has the elegance of a tailored coat. Exactly. All right, let's show a couple of more. This is one that Alex made. And I show this for a couple reasons. First of all, Alex made this in uh, when she was in college. And she wasn't much of a sewer at the time. And so she did a good job on this, um, and which tells me that if you're not an expert, expert sewer with years and years of tailoring experience, you can make this garment. Because she made it without any trouble whatsoever. She put a little corduroy as the contrast and then a bright lining. All right, tell us about this one. Well, we showed it a week or so ago, too. It's probably um, like three months ago. <laughs> Time flies. I saw a similar coat on Pinterest where it was floral plaid, and then it had kind of the nylon lining that you see like in a trench coat for sleeves. But we had this wonderful kind of cotton-like Quilted. quilted fabric and so it all came together in the plaid um you don't have any of this no we we have yeah we do so right here okay and when i finished it i thought gee i hope that's just not too weird but as i said i wore it to kansas city and two people stopped me on the street <laughs> and said where did you get that coat and w one man wouldn't believe i made it he said, no. He said, you, you hired someone to make it. Said, <laughs> my husband said, no, nope, she made it. So what's the lining? Um, the is lining the... is just a Bimberg. OK. Yeah. And the facing is applique to the we, lining. <laughs> we carry a lot of Bimberg linings in a lot of colors. Um, and it's sort of the, it's the standard lining fabric. Okay, this is the last one I made. Uh, Linda had this fabric last winter. Mm -hmm. But the inspiration for this coat came from a Billy Reed catalog. It was done in a linen with the tape. Well, I knew I had all this rolls of tape yep. at home. It's a cotton twill tape. About an inch wide. And so I embellished I love this. I do too. Down the sleeve, this waist band, so Adding, to speak. Yes. And you mitered the corners. Yes. And I'm sure you referred to this book when you did that. Well, I have that book in my head, but it's the most wonderful mitering technique ever. So, yeah. Anyway, and down the back. So, this is a mitering technique that is an, a, what they call an applied miter. It's on the surface of something. So, it's not as if you're turning it and wrapping it around an edge. And so that technique, one of the seven techniques that's in mm -hmm. that book for mitering. Mm -hmm. But I love, I love this. Now, we have this roll of twill tape. You can buy twill tape here and there. I'd have to Google it to see exactly where. If you're totally desperate, we have a little bit. We don't have it on the website. I don't even know how much it is. We can probably you know, cough up a few yards of it for those who are desperate to do this technique. But uh, you'd have to call us. Thank you. So, lining, Bimberg? Bimberg, yes. Yeah. And you know, Kathy's good at choosing buttons, and we have a lot of buttons here. And if you are 
living in a place where you don't have access to buttons, you can always email us or call us, and we're happy to include some buttons with an order. Uh, if you tell us what you're making, we can, and the fabric you're using, either you're ordering it from us or you have it, or some people send us samples and we send some pictures of buttons to you, we can help you with that. So we have a lot of beautiful buttons. Now I do want to mention this coat is two inches longer than this. Okay. This one's been lengthened. Do I want to put it on? Yeah, put it on. <laughs> Need more hands here. <laughs> This would also, with the twill tape, make a great spring coat where you can find some neutral linen, some open weave linen even, and just applique the twill tape on for. Yeah, we're showing all these coats in wintry kinds of fabrics, and but we're going to show it again this spring in some beautiful designer um, mm -hmm. spring and summer for your Easter coat, you know. I always, my mother always used to make me an Easter coat. <laughs> we had dotted Swiss dresses. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> All right, and there is shoulder pads in this, so you see it's not an overwhelming yeah. look. I, I've never seen that on you. That's really good looking. Mm, thank you. Now, let's talk about walking knees. Would you ever consider doing walking knees, or did we build that into the pattern, or can you remember? It's, I don't think, I want to say no to both questions. Yeah. This is as the pattern. Yeah. If okay. you feel that it needs... If it's, if it's splaying out on you, you can always add walking knees, which we've talked about before in um, various Facebook Lives. That's a Sandra Bessina technique from Power mm -hmm. Sewing. You can look it up. It's a wonderful... I think I would next time. On, on the longer coat, on the you long, can see it show up Particularly if you're more, taking it more. longer, longer. Right. You might want to think about that. Yeah. yeah. But not... Maybe right. this length. All right, have we shown all the jackets? Oh, this one. Let's talk about this one. This is the original length, I think. Original sleeve and length. So for those of you who like a short jacket, this is just perfect. But, you know, we talk about the animal print as trim, and then this is, I think, probably a little silk or kimono fabric. I'm not sure, but you've added this. This is not part of the pattern, this little trim here. But I love the way you brought out the button color to match the trim color. That was excellent. <laughs> what do we have for Back. lining in this? Oh, look at that. Oh, that's what the uh, piping is, the flat piping, is the lining fabric. Right. Yeah. It's fun to go into our archives and bring things out again. So these were actually, other than the one I have on and the one you are wearing today, uh, you're looking at the jackets and coats that we made a few years ago, but they're still just as great and classic today uh, as they were then. I mean, this pattern is not dated at all. Now, one thing we didn't mention is this jacket is actually a ponte-like knit. So, yes, so, but you also lined it. I did line it just to have a little more body, to have it slip on, but you can find a ponte knit with more body and it doesn't have to be lined. No. You know, the, I would put the facing on, but it would be fine without lining. We're going to show some spring ones, that I think, that are not lined. So we'll, we'll get into that later this year. But we're really excited to have this pattern back. Uh, we wanted to show it to you in curly boucle, which is what I have on. We also have some Sherpa and some faux shirling, kind of sort of the same thing. So let's talk about fabrics a little bit. So you made this jacket and you texted me. I gave you, I commanded you to make this jacket. <laughs> and you texted me and said, what was your first text? Uh, do you, it, I mean, I knew the fabric would tolerate a raw edge finish because it does not um, ravel. And it is kind of a knit, isn't it? A knit base, maybe? Kind of. Or not? No. Okay. Well, it is raw edge. It doesn't, it doesn't ravel. But it is a little thick. So I texted her and I said, do you want to do a raw edge garment, lap seams, everything, or traditional? 
And she said, uh, make a, for me to decide myself. <laughs> so I did make many samples. I'm not a great sample maker, but I did prove that I could do it. So I did do a lap seam on my sample, which is where you leave the lower seam with the 5 8 and then the upper uh, piece, you take the 5 8 off and flat, because I thought it would just be a nice flat finish. Well, on this little sample, it was doable, but when you went to a whole sleeve, I discovered that the craft tape you use to secure the top piece to the bottom piece does not stick to this pile. I mean, it was impossible. So you had to use pins or you would have had to hand baste it all the way. And so I thought, uh, that's not a good not thing. Not doing that, huh? I'm not doing that. <laughs> all right. And so... This is the lapped one, and that is the first stitch in a lapped one, which it doesn't look bad. It looks fine, but it would have been a nightmare to get through a whole garment. And then I thought, okay, let's just put wrong sides together and do a little seam and then trim it real close. You know, this one would be okay. Mm -hmm. But it would still think, I mean, you'd still have to do some thinking about how you're going to construct your sleeve, your armhole. And so then finally I gave in and did a traditional seam. Let's look at it on here. And I th pressed it. I thought, you know, that looks perfectly fine. It looks wonderful. And it was doable. So I went to the construction of, in traditional seams of most of it, except for the edges are raw edge. The pocket is raw edge. But the edges are faced, they're double layer. Right. So, yes, it's two edges coming together, wrong sides together, and then sewn along the edge. So right. they, it is raw edge. And you're trimming your, I mean, you're trimming your 5 8 seam allowance. So you sewed on the 5 8 inch? I did. And then you trimmed it? Right. Got it. You didn't try to sew real close to an edge after it was trimmed. No. That's impossible. <laughs> yeah. No. Okay. Well, uh, so the only place it actually is turned is the pocket top. Yeah. So the pocket is raw edge. Right. All the outer edges, sleeve and garment, are two layers of fabric sewn together and trimmed. Yeah. Everything else is a traditional Brilliant, sew. Brilliant, <laughs> as they say in other places. <laughs> Well, honestly, I, and I didn't mean, I didn't mean to even line it, but after I started all these seams and I trimmed the inside of the seam fair, re really, really close, then I thought, okay, so I'll try and serge it so it looks better, and it was trimmed too close to serge. So my last thing was, if I find red lining in my stash, I'm lining it. And voila. <laughs> I went in. Perfect. There was red lining. It's like the garment god said, okay, you can yes. <laughs> well, I think one of the points here is that it's a challenging fabric. You considered it a challenging fabric, but you were willing to spend a little time making samples, and you didn't exactly know everything before you started out, but you did have the seam finishes. You finally sorted out the seam finishes with the sample, so you were able to construct the jacket. Then you made other decisions and samples about hem finishes, and then the lining sort of came to you later. So I think, you know, you're one of these people who can um, kind of make a decision on the spot. You can work with what you have and you're willing to take the time to sort it out, uh, which I think a lot of us want all the answers given to us right away. But to me, sewing is the challenge of sorting out some of these issues. And so this turned out, in, in theory, to be a really simple thing to make. But you did have to do some work to get to that simplicity. Well, and some of my work was to cover up some of the beginning things that I didn't like, the result. Like, I, it doesn't need to be lined. 
but it does make it look pretty on the inside. Yeah, lighting, you know, serves a couple of purposes, and, and one of them is that it hides the inter, inner construction of a garment, and that's really one of its purposes. And there are pattern pieces for the lining, so you don't have to that's right. figure it out, how am I going to line this garment? So Yeah, it's there for you. Mm -hmm. So we've got some colors of this curly boucle. We have this beautiful, uh, deep burgundy. We have black, and we have... This great teal. Do you know the fabric con fiber content of these fabrics offhand? I can't remember. I want to say it's polyester. It is polyester. Is it all polyester? Uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we have, of course, the color that I have on. Then we have a couple of other fabrics that are boucle like but we're calling them Sherpa. And Sherpa is a man-made... It's a faux shirling. Shirling in its traditional sense is a real fur from lamb or sheep. And, but this has more texture, but it's a curly, curly shirling. <laughs> it's so beautiful. I know, this is just amazing. And it does have a nice backing to it. You can see that it's not the real skin, so to speak. But, so it's a boucle, but it has a little more character than the boucle that we have here. And we only have it in this color. I only ordered it in this color because I thought it looked the most natural. You know, to get a faux shirling in pink, it's fine, but it's, you don't see very many pink lambs. <laughs> well, as I say that, you probably do see pink lambs, but never mind. And the backing also, I mean, you could get away with no lining. That's right. With this backing. That's right. This is really unusual. Yeah. And then this one is a different texture. I love that. So this is a little smaller boucle, I guess I'll call it. But we're calling it a Sherpa. And it is a little bit of a curly. What's the backing of this one? Well, it's this is a, like a fleece oh, backing. That's beautiful, yeah. So this is probably a variation of a fleece in how it's constructed in real life. But we're seeing the, we're, but we're using instead of the smooth fleece side, the curly side to it, which I think is more interesting. And you hold this a minute, because we, we have this color of quilted, and we liked these together for the sleeves on this. I think that would be beautiful. But we also have mm -hmm. some colors of wool melton, and that would be beautiful as well. So make your coat out of the beautiful 100% wool Melton, which we have five colors of. We're only showing a couple of colors here. And put it with your quilted um, cotton for sleeves, like this. Yeah, and this is 100% cotton. I w it would make just a beautiful coat on its own, Well, too. it would, exactly. And then we have, well, this is another color. So we have five colors of this. I can't tell you offhand all of them, but this is a beautiful, beautiful, soft, lustrous, all wool Melton, perfect for coats and jackets. And this is the time of year to buy it. And you have the color you have on too. That's right. With the sleeve. So those are our fabrics. Those are our techniques. And even if you don't want to do a whole garment in this, a whole garment, in this, think of how it would look with the trim that we showed on a coat. That oh, way. yes. Well, that's right. Use, buy a yard of it and use it for mm -hmm. bits and pieces. That's it, a great idea. Yeah, even that. Yeah. It could be the facing only. It could be the collar, cuffs, a whole band at the bottom. That would be kind of fun. Yeah, or even your muskrat fur. Or my muskrat fur. <laughs> mm -hmm. The head coming out of the pocket. <laughs> Remember how they used to wrap those little guys around their necks? And, ooh, yeah. Well, I don't know. I never saw my mother in a fur in her entire life. So I don't know what this fur thing is all about. Maybe they came from her mother. I don't know. Wish I, could, I wish I could ask her. <laughs> all right, any questions? You have to repeat the question. So, uh, what size are you guys wearing? What size? I'm wearing a medium, and Kathy is wearing a small. And that is, a, I'm glad you brought that up because I am normally a small. But this jacket is not generous, and I am more comfortable in a medium 
although I think I could probably make a medium and, and make a small on the hips. But I have a little more mass than Kathy does on the top. And so you're better in a small and I'm in a medium. Well, I think when you have a heavier jacket like this, you want maybe just a tiny bit more yeah. ease in it. So you might consider going up a size. If you're normally making a small in some of our jackets, maybe you're going to make a medium in this one or large, so extra large or whatever. But do check the girth of the sleeve. Measure your girth and then measure the pattern. And all of that is in our Anatomy of a Sleeve tutorial. How to do that, how much ease. I'm thinking it's two inches of ease or an inch and a half. I think it's two inches of ease in a coat. I can't remember offhand, but we have an ease chart in there of how much extra space you should have in a jacket versus a blouse, a dress, whatever. But you always like, I mean, you always say sleeves are tied on you, but this one is. This one's not tied this on This one's me. from the pattern, right. medium, and that. But I have a lot of trouble with this. I have right. ill-proportioned upper arms. I'd like to say it's because of my tennis, but I don't play tennis with my left hand, so I'm not <laughs> quite sure what's going on. <laughs> um, is the pattern construction for raw edge finish or traditional? The pattern construction is totally traditional. Um, could you make this jacket in a linen? Absolutely. Be beautiful. Be beautiful, yeah. I guess we should repeat the question. Yes, you can make the garment in a linen. Should we make a muslin before making this jacket? Should you make a muslin before making this jacket? Not a bad idea. Uh, a simple uh, body in one sleeve, no collar you know, thing. I, I think it's not a bad idea. It's a jacket where you might want to consider some of your standard slope shoulder, uh, round back adjustments, a few little tweaks like that, but you want to make sure about the arm and you want to make sure the bust darts are in the right place. And what kind of buttonhole is used? What kind of buttonholes do you use? These are all machine made buttonholes, I think. That's unusual for you, Kathy. You usually do some bound buttonholes. <laughs> but these I'm, are... I'm, I'm kind of over bound buttonholes. These are all machine-made buttonholes. Yes. And it's machine-made on this. OK. Um, and does the pattern include the lining directions? Does the pattern include the lining of directions? Yes. Did Kathy try matching the stripes on her collar on her shorter jacket, or did she decide to do uh, or not match the collar? Did Kathy decide to match the stripes on her collar, or did you get lucky? It doesn't really match. It happens to match one time. I don't think you tried. Well, it's, it I think comes it just, down on the bias, so I'm not sure you could match every stripe. Right. The collar is cut on the bias. So that's, the matching is probably out the window on that. And can we serge the seam edges if we don't want to line the jacket? And I think they're referring to your jacket, Linda. Can you serge the seam edges if you don't want to line it? I don't know why not. No, the only place you would have to do something different is the back neck. Yeah, there's no back facing in the pattern yeah, because either, it's lined. Yeah. Or, no, is that right? Yeah. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you talk. I'll shut up. Okay. So the back <laughs> neck is finished with the lining. So you would either make a back facing or you would turn in your 5 eighths inch in, and hand stitch on the back. And there was a question about my, my vest or jacket. Uh, a question about Aaron's vest or jacket. So come on, come on down. Uh, this is the E shrug lengthened with contrasting long sleeves. You wouldn't even recognize it, but it's the E shrug, mm -hmm. our simplest pattern on the planet. And it's not lined. It's not lined. <laughs> no. <laughs> that was a question. <laughs> Raw edge, selvage edge, mm -hmm. unfinished edges. Very simple. Yeah. <laughs> and the instructions for lengthening the garment and lengthening the sleeve are in the E shrug pattern directions. All right. So. All right. So the, I think mainly the collar is kind of tricky to see. OK. 
Can you avoid? Maybe can you avoid my neck? <laughs> You want me to oh, collar. point point to something? Yeah, the collar that that's you know two layers. Oh yeah, edge. there's a seam here. So this is all raw edged, and this is raw edged. Mm -hmm. And it's top stitched, right? Well, it's stitched with so the facing and the outer garment are wrong sides together, stitched on the five eighths inch seam allowance, and then trimmed close, close like eighth of an inch or less. And I only did one stitching, you know, normally on a raw edge we'll come back and do a second one, but I like the look of just leaving it with one, mm -hmm. one stitch. Uh, and what pants are you guys wearing? I am wearing the West End pants in a wild print, and I am Picasso in a jersey knit. Shoes, we both have on boots, booties. <laughs> Socks. It's sock time here. It's freezing. This coat is perfect for today. Um, so the lapel is um, laying flatter on the jacket Kathy is wearing. Um, and then why does it stand out a bit on the other ones? It's just the nature of the fabric. The thickness, yes. It's thicker. The collar is standing out on mine. Uh, Excuse me. <clears throat> when you get, you know, a, a finer woven fabric, this is a wool, you know, that it'll lie down a little bit more. But that, maybe that needs some steam then. <laughs> steam it, but I don't know, I kind of like it like this myself. When I look in the mirror and just wearing it open, I just kind of liked it like this. It's the nature of it standing yeah, but open, yeah. You could steam it, but it is the nature of the fabric. Or you could put a different fabric as the, as the facing, a thinner fabric. Okay, how is the twill tape added um, to the collar, that natural twill tape jacket? Okay, so this is <clears throat> to, I basted it on the back and then stitched it on the front. So y your wool is sandwiched in here. And, and then the, this is the natural raw edge of the tape. Right, this is the raw edge of the tape. Um, it took a little bit of thought to do that I, and maybe a lot of fusy web to get it on there. Let me get a close up of the corner and the collar. There we go. Wow, great miter. <laughs> nice miter. <laughs> Are the facings interfaced? Um, not on this fabric. Did you interface this fabric? No. No. It would depend on your fabric. Um, the what? only place I interfaced was the buttonhole. I put a little square of interfacing in because it did need a little bit of a stability here. So the only place I would, I, in most wools, I would not interface the facing. I think it depends a lot on how the fabric is behaving when cut on the bias on the collar. If you're needing to stabilize that, oh. Right. Maybe mm -hmm. you could interface it. Well, I would on like this jacket. I would. Yeah. So I think that's, that's always a fabric decision. And probably I would interface yeah. this one. But we always use a very sheer, ultra sheer interfacing. We get it from Japan. And so it stabilizes without changing the character of the fabric. So it's mm -hmm. not like we're stiffening it. We're just adding support to mm -hmm. it. So you don't even know it's there, but it's doing its job. Yeah, and maybe one collar. One collar. Mm -hmm. You make samples first, you know, <laughs> with and without. Okay, are there any special considerations for enlarging a two-piece sleeve? Uh, you, you would tape the, are there any considerations for 
uh, increasing the size of a two-piece sleeve. Um, so you would take the two pieces and tape them together to become one sleeve pattern piece. And then you would do your measuring, and then you would do your standard uh, increase as if it were one sleeve, and then you take the pieces apart again and use them. did include, we were talking about that walking ease earlier, and Betsy did include a link to the blog. Okay. So you might mention that. All right. We have a link posted uh, to the blog that explains walking ease. Thank you, Betsy. What would you use, what kind of fabric would you use for uh, a muslin? What kind of fabric would you use for a muslin? I would use muslin. <laughs> oh, I guess this is a reference to, oh. to the sterling. Sorry. Oh, oh sterling muslin? Yeah, if you were making a sterling muslin, what would you use? Uh, if you're making a sterling muslin, I would still use muslin. And when I say muslin, there's a difference in muslins. And, um, you know, we use one here that's a, a cotton with a little bit of poly in it. So it, it, it's not like a gauzy muslin. You want something that's stable so you can really check the size. Now, a lot of people use sheets, a lot of people use old fabric, but you want to be able to mark on something. So I want to use muslin because a, mar a, a marking pen, magic marker, pencil, pen, whatever will show up. And you can rip it apart and then use those as pattern pieces perhaps. There's real advantages to just doing it in muslin, like the real toile thing that they do in the couture houses. Um, so the Verona jacket, um can it be lengthened into a coat? Like, is there a difference between the jacket and the coat when it comes to like the dimensions and? No, there's no difference between the jacket and the coat in terms of dimensions of hip and so forth. So you can just lengthen the jacket pattern to make the coat if you're doing the digital download. But the jacket has a shorter sleeve. Yeah, the jacket does have a shorter sleeve. Did, or did we lengthen the sleeve in the digital versions? Mm -hmm. No, okay. Yeah, remember that. The sleeve is short in the digital version, shorter. So you would have to address this, the lining too, right? Yeah, remember to do that to the lining, to lengthen the lining as well. Where do your questions go? Well, disappeared. Well, disappeared. All right. Um, do you, can you pre-shrink these fabrics? Can you pre-shrink these fabrics? I don't know because I haven't. Well, but the fact that they're polyester, <clears throat> it's not going to shrink. You might give it a steam just to see. You know, it's always, uh, we recommend cutting a four or six inch square of fabric, whatever you're using, and putting it in the washing machine and just see what happens. Then you know. Um, that's the only way you're really going to tell. For polyester, it did, I mean, the traditional seam did press open and lie flat, much to my surprise. I mean, I think that looks really pretty. You just don't want to get the iron directly on it. Give it a good steam. And then if you have your clapper, flatten it on the wrong side. Use some organza maybe as a press cloth. Clap it. Hand press. You know, don't just smash it with the iron. But it is poly, so you could re reconstitute some of the pile if you True. get. True, but you don't want to melt it. Too heavy handed. <laughs> Unless you want an embossed look, you could do that. Okay. Um, would you line a Melton ver version of the Verona? Would I line a Melton version of the Verona? Absolutely. <clears throat> that would be the prettiest way to deal with that fabric. Okay, we have some so confident questions. Okay. Um, will all the outfits coordinate for so confident, or will there be other colorways for future projects? Will all of the outfits coordinate, uh, or will they vary for future projects? We're going to, the upcoming projects uh, after, let's see, January, February, March, April, after April, starting in May, we will be using fabrics that have a more summer feel to them, but we'll be st hopefully staying in a range where you might be able to throw the jacket, the sterling jacket, over it. 
Um, that's kind of yet to be determined. We haven't done our fabrications yet from uh, May on. The idea is that this jacket, the sterling jacket, hopefully you can wear year-round, uh, but there will be variations and color, color options will change. I think the idea is that the styles really work together well. This jacket's going to go with the next pants series. It's going to uh, go over the skirt, go, work with the skirt that's coming up. Uh, obviously, the T-shirt will work with both the skirt and the two pants that are in the line. All of them will go under the raincoat. Um, so the styles are more wardrobe connected than absolute colorways. Does that make sense, Erin? I think so. OK. Mm -hmm. All right, another so confident question. How much does the fabric shrink of uh, the sterling jacket, I'm guessing? I'm um, concerned about not having enough fabric after it's pre-shrunk. I can't tell you how much it shrinks. You would have to. Um, uh, do a sample. I didn't wash this fabric because I wouldn't wash the jacket. So I can't tell you. I can't imagine it shrinking much. The only shrinkage might be in the, since it's a matte lisse, sort of a two layer fabric, it might be, look a little more rumpled and draw up a little, which probably could be pressed out. But in terms of shrinkage, you're not going to get massive amounts of shrinkage. Do you think on the well, matte Isn't it a rayon? It's cotton, rayon, and a little bit of linen. You'd get a little, but I think the rayon might save you a little. I can't yeah, remember I if I washed a sample or not. Hmm. Kathy made one jacket, I made another. You made two jackets. I Wait, you made one, I made one, you made one. None of us pre-washed the fabric, as I recall. So none of us have that experience of doing that. But I remember there was a question about um, whether, so if they buy the jacket fabric, um, is, um, how does it work for buying the other parts of the kits? Is there a guarantee since they bought the jacket fabric? That's part of, the, uh, of what we're working on right now with this. Uh, we are definitely going to have the appropriate or the coordinating pieces to go with the number of kits that we have sold thus far. Where I'm working on seeing if I can get more of the coordinating fabrics to get more, if I can get more of the jacket fabric. So all of that's going to come together in the next couple of days. But we have other fabric options coming as well. So there will be a complete three fabric version available to you for the beginning three patterns. I don't know if I answered that very well. but. Um, I'm not, I'm, I'm hoping to know a lot more today or tomorrow. I wonder if we could see the swatches again. We're going to have some solid options for pants. Um, for our fourth bonus month, we have another fabric uh, to make the, a variation of the t-shirt top, and that, those will coordinate with all of these as well. Uh, do you know how high the collar is on the Verona? Two inches, two inch collar height on the Verona. No. So about that. And, and it's not, um, turn around, you can see it really well here. See, it's not, it's, it's not coming up really high in the back. And, it, and it's, because it's biased, it really is nicely shaped. If you have one shoulder lower than the other, is it okay to put a shoulder pad only on one side, or do you double up on the lower side? If you have one shoulder lower than the other, is it okay to do one shoulder on one side and no shoulder pad on one side and no shoulder pad on the other? Um, I have no problem with that, but you could alter your pattern to have a left shoulder and a right shoulder. 
Well, you're laughing at me. No, I, I, that's the way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I would do. I would alter the pattern and have two, two fronts and your, your back uh, would have two different slopes to, this, to the, um, the shoulder seam on the back. So I think really it's better to have two shoulder pads or no shoulder pads and alter the shoulders. I guess that's what I'm saying in a nutshell. There was a question about the 100 order limit. Um, will previous years so confident links continue to be available indefinitely? Um, it's, it's 100 orders no matter what you purchase, so they would have the same issue. So they need to download so confident too. All right, see if I can repeat that, or did I hope, or maybe people heard it. Um, all right, so the question is, is the 100 item limit, uh, are, you, are you still gonna have access to your So Confident files from years previous? Those are all included in that 100 number, so that's why we're suggesting that you go back now, if you haven't done it, and download what you can from those older files previous so confidence, previous tutorials, previous patterns, whatever it is, get them downloaded. I know 100 sounds like a lot, but we have a lot of customers who 100 is nothing. So, I mean, I can think of one person who fills that up in two months. So, um, you know, you need to get your files downloaded to something where you can access them in another way on your device. Now, they're still there, and we will always be able to get them to you. But if you want access at midnight on Saturday night, you probably ought to have it on your computer. Uh, there were a couple questions about finished measurements, garment measurements for the Verona. Um, if it's not there, we can work on getting it there. Yeah, this is a question about finished measurements for the Verona. Um, obviously, we don't have that right this minute but we can get that is, is mm -hmm. that would be included on the pattern, wouldn't it be? If I can double check. Yeah, we'll double check that. Mm -hmm. we, we started doing finished measurements on garments a few years ago, and I'm not sure exactly where the cutoff was on that. Mm -hmm. So we'll check. Yeah. How would the Verona look without the collar? How would the Verona look without the collar? Not so good. To me, the neckline would be too wide. It would be a really deep V wrap over, but I don't know. It would just yeah. We're we're not liking it. <laughs> you know, if you don't like the collar, it would be good. I mean, just maybe a, like a little band up here. Yeah. Take the collar down to maybe a three fourths inch high band there, so it would have a more finished look. <clears throat> Well, there is another question about the 100 order limit. Um, to clarify, I understand there will be only 100 items in my account. Are the videos also eventually going away for so confident? Like, does that include that portal? Um, that page is separate. That yeah. Uh, you're asking about the 100 item limit. Does that affect the portal? No, your portal is a separate uh, item, and all the videos will always be there. That's not affecting the account, what's in your account on our website. That's different. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, how tall are you, Kathy? Well, I'm 5'7". <laughs> I'm 5'6". Do I look an inch taller than her? You do. You look a little slightly okay. taller. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you're 5'6 and I'm 5'5 five five now. <laughs> <laughs> I've probably just shrunk a half an inch since I said that. <laughs> Let's just stand up straight. Yeah. Okay, now we are 5'7 and 5'6. Are you going to have any So Kansas events this year? Are we going to have any So Kansas events this year? Um, we have a group of people who paid a deposit for So Kansas events two years ago. And those people are going to be contacted by Betsy shortly about two opportunities to attend a So Kansas event. We're going to have two. Those people will be, um, Aaron doesn't even know this. 
<laughs> we decided that while you were gone on vacation. <laughs> so um, anyway, uh, we are going to have two So Kansas events. But the people who have deposits on, on previous events will have first choice, first option to opt in to them. And then we'll open it up after that. Um, I think this has to do with the sterling. How do you know if your kit color is available now for the jacket? Uh, how do you know if a kit color is available now in the jacket? It says on the website, when you go to the various colors, if it says back ordered, that means that we are out. And that means that I and you are emailing me with your preference, whether it's olive, black, navy, whatever. Um, we'll be contacted uh, individually, probably. As yes, I, as soon as I know what the deal is, I'm going to contact you individually. I'm collecting my list. Uh, if, if, you can, if you can punch the button with the quantity and order it, we have it. Okay, here's all those so confident questions. Okay, for the oatmeal kit, are the top and pants fabrics cool or warm? For the oatmeal kit, are the top and bottom fabrics cool or warm? I never know. I'm terrible at this. Well, I think this is a... Oh. This and this is what they're asking about. Is green cool? Kind of. <laughs> well, green is on the... I don't know. The plaid is warm. Plaid is warm. I would say both of these are on the warm side. I always need a color wheel in front of me to know warm and cool. I think there's a nice mix in that group of cool and warm, to be honest. Mm -hmm. You've got the yellow, you've got the couple colors of green. Mm -hmm. um, a, kind of a gray green. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, probably don't want to put that away. Does the auburn fabric have an orange undertone or a mauve undertone? Well, <laughs> I would say mauve. Mm -hmm. Well, especially when you put them all together. I think yeah. Kind of a different... Yeah, there's well, not... Well, I have on something that's kind of more on the orange side. Yeah, it's a brownie mauve. Yeah, it's a brownie mauve. Mm -hmm. I think that's the interesting thing about a lot of these colors. If you put them with something else, right. they kind of absorb that. Right. You know. this, this olive color is the color that we think is almost the most neutral of all of them. Believe it or not, um, that's a color you can wear with everything. That's my favorite colorway. Mine too. <laughs> <laughs> Is the green? That's fine, and I'm I would I'm not that traditional color. Right. Or, well, you know yeah. I am with that, but um, but yeah. So. My favorite jacket color. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a question about what time on Friday is so confident. Midnight on Friday. That is the release of the video, and uh, so Friday at midnight, fr Friday, January 7th at 12.01 a.m., you will get the materials list and the video together. So there's not a live event. On there's no live event on the 7th. That is something you download separately outside of your account, <laughs> but actually you'll have a link that puts it in your So Confident um, what are we calling that? Um, oh, I can think it's portal now. I keep talking about portal. Um, it's your landing page. Landing. It's your so confident landing page where you're going to have that on your computer as so confident series 11. Bang. Everything's in there. Mm -hmm. It's outside of your account. It's divided into months. It's, mm -hmm. just, a, it's just a page on our website. So yeah. That's especially for you. And then there was a question about um, wool melton. What makes it a melton? What makes wool melton a melton? It's the texture of it, as I understand it. It's a, it's a more luxurious flannel. Now, in I, I could go to my dictionary and probably find some fancy definition of what melton is, but I'm pretty sure it's, it's how it's made with its pile. 
So the same wool could be woven into a tropical weight worsted. It could be made into a flannel. It could be made into a melton. It could be made into a curly boucle. It could be made into lots of things. So I think it's just a, a, a method of weaving that creates a deeper, luxurious pile. And sometimes melton doesn't ravel, does it? I don't know. I think Melton can ravel a little bit. There might be some that don't ravel, but I think that's a... Um, there's definitely a pile and a nap. So, it, for instance, here, hold this a minute. I can hold it like this. Yeah. Okay. So, it has a nap. So, this is the nap going down. Now, if I go up, am I changing the color of it? No, but it should. But you definitely want to be careful about how you lay out your pattern pieces. Now, here's a cut edge. Oh, you know, you could get a few strings. It does ravel a little. It ravels a little bit. But it's definitely something that has a deeper pile than a flat woven wool. But now you're going to make me go look it up after Facebook Live. <laughs> There's a question about so confident and plus sizes. Um, it's someone I guess who contacted us, but uh, I really want to do this. But most of your patterns, I don't have to grade up a size or two. Um, I have books on this, but I'm not confident with doing it. Uh, this is all about plus sizing, and I've answered a few people on uh, my emails. The sterling jacket is a really easy pattern to uh, grade up. Now, just as an aside, if you happen to own the printed copy of the Quincy jacket, that came in plus sizes, 1X to 3X. So you would have the pattern pieces, the body of that, that you could transpose onto your new sterling jacket. Now, not all the pieces and parts are there for you, like the flounce and the new collar and the band and all that but the basic body shape would be there in the Quincy. So that's one way if you happen to have that pattern. Secondly, uh, because the uh, garment is constructed in such a way that it has this seam, this seam comes up the front, over the shoulder, and down the back as one continuous sewn seam. So this is a seam, and that's, this is not at the shoulder. This is inset. So this is a seam where you can add to it all the way. Or you can shape it. Like if you don't need more width up here, this seam could be angled. This side panel could be angled if you need more hip room. So there are w easy ways to... Um, I, think I'll, I think what I'll do with this, because I've had three or four questions about it, I think in the Q&A that's coming up at the end of January, I will have some drawings for that, and maybe we can send them out earlier uh, than that, actually. Um, so some quick little sketches of, of things, of ways to do it, because it's pretty easy. Now, the Hudson Pants, which are the second pattern, um, that goes to uh, XXL, and I'm hoping that most of you who need something larger than XXL already have your pants routine figured out, but if not, we can help you. And the third pattern, which is the Crane Street Tee, uh, that's a pretty generous size garment. Uh, that'll be easy to, to increase. But the Quincy's, or excuse me, the Sterling is the one that's probably baffling most people, but we can help you with that. Um, so let's say you decide to join so confident later in the year and you have already purchased a couple of individual ones. Will you be given credit towards the total price? Yes. If you join so confident later in the year, you get credit for what a, the monthly price would have been had you paid the th the 425. So you would take 425 divided by 12. I don't know what that is. Let's say it's $42 or $39 or something like that. So later on, if you bought the So Confident, we would credit you one or two or three, however many, $39 each things. 
what, what I'm saying is you don't get your full 49 times however many. You get whatever the monthly fee of the 425 would have been. How would you do a petite adjustment with the sleeve and top being all one piece? The sleeve and top being all in one piece? In what garment? Is this the sterling? Mm -hmm. Oh. Um, so this would be a fold across here. These are the kinds of questions, by the way, that, that should be in the Q&As, frankly, True. but which we can deal with. Uh, I can deal, you know, when I do the Q&As, I, I have a, I can, on my computer screen, I can draw things, I can explain things much better. So just remember that. Awesome. Yeah. But you do your standard petite folding across, and then you would have to fold out the same amount across the sleeve. Um, the red knit and the black and white color group, is it a true red? What is the red? It's a true red in the black and white kit. We didn't forget about you red people. <laughs> okay. A lot of questions today. I think I got most of them. <laughs> All right, if we didn't answer your question today because there were a lot of questions, feel free to email me and we'll, we'll try to get you uh, answered by next June. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, what we have on sale today is the Verona pattern, print, and digital. We have all of our fabrics. We have the Mastering Miters book is on sale and two tutorials, one called Anatomy of a Sleeve where you can figure out how really how a sleeve is built and how to adjust that girth and other th how to set in a sleeve. Beautiful tutorial on how to set in the sleeve. And the other tutorial is bagging the lining. Now, granted, this particular lining technique is slightly different because of this curved shape, but nevertheless, it's a really valuable tutorial in general. There are two methods of bagging the lining in that tutorial, so it's very, quite comprehensive. All right. <laughs> Is that it? Did we do it all? <laughs> I think so. All right. Right. <laughs> all right. We're on for next week, next Tuesday, and we'll see you then.